Hello and welcome again, if you have seen it before, and welcome if you haven't seen it before as well. Uh, I've been away for a while, I've been taking a break, but uh, now I'm back, and uh, I can't wait to tie some flies that I will bring to Norway and send these flies I've tied here. The <laughs> Sierra Corva, Sierra Corva. Uh, I will send to a friend of mine that will fish earlier than me and uh, I hope that he catch something on my flies. And uh, I will try to make a variant of the Sierra Corva, uh, one of Michael's uh, Alta river flies, river Alta flies. So uh, let's just start the tying. Here I have a uh, uh, medium in bronze and extra small in uh, fluorescent orange which I will tie together where I've cut a little angle to connect the two diameters to each other so we don't have to use any glue or anything just to wind on here between where we cut the angle and they sit together nicely and I will start with a little mirage tinsel. In the back as a tag. I don't I won't you make any tails on these fly. I rarely make tails on them. And wind it back and save about five millimeters for the hook. And just lock it in. Cut it and leave one, two millimeters so it won't slip and then the ribbing will be Alta Gold SSS braid, hollow braid, I tie that in on my side and then on the body I will have a hot orange in flames. which is my favorite as you already know because I've told you every time I tie with it start to wind the hot orange in flames on and cover up where you tied in the mirage tinsel and I will stop it here And fold it back and lock it in with a few more turns so we are certain that it won't slip and uh, I will use dubbing here I have a uh, charcoal black regular dubbing and uh, glitz dubbing and a few strands of patacorva bronze that was left on my table when I mixed this so that doesn't matter all good and dub it on start to cover where you tied in the SSS braid for the body Take quite much dubbing, so we'll, it will brush this out like this. Oh, my thumb got stuck on the nail, on the nail, on the tubing. And now on to the Alta Gold ribbing, which I spin. and start to wind it on and pull it hard down into the dubbing and lock it in a few turns and then I wind it up and I fold it back and lock it in with a few more turns like this and now it's time to brush out the 
the dubbing. So the fly gets a little more translucent and glittery. Like this. I hope it didn't get out of focus now. And now I will take a ring neck pheasant rump feather instead of a body hackle. I tie this on in the front here so the fibers will vibrate alongside the fly. Cut a little uh, triangle and tie it in a tip on my side. this and now I will take my hackle plier and wind this on and pull back the fibers and the first turn as close to the dubbing as you can get it and the next turns as close to the hackle turn as you can get it this then we lock it in One, two three four five like that and now I take my little comb See that the spread is even, which I think it is. And then I go back with the thread because now we will tie in some hot orange angel hair HD under the wing, and this is very fluorescent. These orange strands and tie it in wide. One turn. And fold over and one two turns yeah that's good and we cut them on off in different length not too long because we don't want these to tangle in the hook and that's good and now I will take a hot orange as a first wing and this will be two-thirds of the, the wing take my little comb take away some of the fluff and if we do like this we get away the shorter strands and I put it between my thumb and my index finger quite wide and I want this to be straight now and then I just pull in the middle fewer and fewer strands so I get it like this so that it looks like this so it taper it's taper and then I hold it down Press a little with my thumb there to get it wide, nice and wide, and a loose turn. Pull down one, two, three, four, five. Looks so it sits good. I think it looks good. And then I pull this and cut away the excess. And tidy up. Like that and now I will have a few strands of hot orange in flames but in the angel hair version so they're a lot thinner tie those on wide too one turn and fold over fold them back 
it's all loose. Like this. That look good. And cut them off in different length as well. Like that. This was loose. And now I will put on some glue and put on a burnt orange hackle. Put some glue on, on the hair here, so it's nice and secured. Take with the excess with my fingers. And here it is. Burnt orange speckled hen hackle. And cut that little triangle on this too. Tie it in on my side. And the hackle plier again. And start winding it on. The first turns, as always, as close to the wing as possible. Like this. And the other turn a little forward. And we work our way slowly forward to cover up the ugly ugliness and one more turn like that and we lock this in two three four five Like this, and now back to the comb to see if the hackle sits good. I think it looks really good. And now it's time for wing number two. It's gonna be a little fiery brown patakorvesh upper wing. Take away the fluffy part on this hair too. And line them up. Put them between your index finger and your thumb quite wide and pull in the middle. Fewer and fewer strands. And we will get a nice taper on this wing section too. This is the last wing. I just used two wings on this fly. And that's a little long. That will be good, I think. I'm gonna press this down also. Loose turn. Pull it down. Check so it sits good. I think it does. One, two, three, four, five, six turns now. And then pull this up. And check it again. Yeah, I think it looks really good. And now we cut away the excess here. Tidy up a bit. Like this. And I'm still on the medium tubing. Tubing, not tubing. It's a lot of swinglish here. Now I'm down. I'm still on the medium tubing. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of Nasty Rusty. One of my favorite angel hairs. And put on top. Tie this in wide. Loose turn, pull down, fold them back. Make sure that they're wide before you make the attaching attachment. <laughs> that looks really good. I don't want these to be longer than the, than the longest hairs, so we cut them off also in different lengths. I want the longest strands to be the fox hair. 
Mm, yeah, that looks really good. And now I will take um, Peacock. Let's see if these are long enough. Yeah, I think so. And here I have five. It's quite a big and bulky fly. And now I will try to do a smiko to separate them a little bit between my fingers before I tie them in. And I will try to tie them in all at once. Like this, and the loose turn, pull down, one, two, three, and they landed almost too good <laughs> for being me. Got, I'm glad I got that on, on video because they never goes this easy and there we cut them off and now it's time for some jungle cock just take two nice feathers I have to drink a little bit of water first. Get thirsty. I'm sp I spilled all over myself. That doesn't matter. It's just water. And now let's see how long we want the jungle cocks to be. Almost as long as the body. And I'll take away the strands, equal amount on both ones, and then I curve it on my fingernail, so they get a little bent, they push a little against the wing, and I tie it in with quite loose turns. so I can adjust them if I'm not happy with how they sit. Try to put this exactly the same length and in the same spot where you put the first jungle cock. And then I look from the front and they look quite good. I'm pretty happy with how they sit. Now I'm going to make a few turns with uh, glue on the thread before I continue because I want to lock in the jungle cocks as they sit like that. Now I cut them off. And all that's left now is a black front tackle and I put a few here, this one, quite soft, looks really nice I think and I will use quite much of this feather to cover up the stuff in the front here. Tie it in. And if you want to be extra care, extra um, thorough, I use this black felt pen and I color the things that were fiery brown and the other colors with the black one. It's harder to see. If I made some mistakes then. But I think this one looks really good. And uh, I will use the hackle plier again. I will put a little bit of glue here first so the wings. Ay! It's sharp. The wings get attached thoroughly. The fiery brown wing and the peacock pearls. 
No, I have to... Wait a bit before I tie in this hackle so the glue doesn't ruin it. No. And uh, pull back the strands. And the first turn as close to the wing as always. It landed quite good. And another turn on the medium tubing. And then we go down on the extra small. And I will use this whole feather because it's quite a big fly. And I want it to be bulky in the front. So it creates a really good drop form. And lock it in. Two, three, four, five. And my little comb again to see that we Got an even spread with the black. I think it looks really good. And now I will take a copper tungsten turbo cone head to finish this beautiful Sierra Corva. And I put it on. And then I put glue on the thread. This. And then I try to wind the thread in the same place so it's easy to cover up with the turbo comb. Like that. And I don't use hard wraps now because then the turbo comb uh, helps me to pack this thread. And then I use an uh, orange. Niklas Bauer pike tube this time because the white one I never I never found it so this orange one is easier to find. Then I just push down the the comb head hard against the fly and it's done. <laughs> and then I check it out. A few long ones. Cut them off, and I think that uh, the spread is really good. The orange is the most part of this fly, and yeah, I think it turned out really good. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Did you think it turned out good? Melt it down so it presses against the cone head. It helps to hold the turbo cone head in place and also the glue. And we are done with this fly. And I think it turned out really good. I hope my friend gets happy when he gets this these flies in the mail. So here it is, Sierra Corva, a variant, but almost like the original, I don't, there uh, should be an orange uh, cox hackle as a body hackle and an uh, orange tail, but otherwise it's quite similar, 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 why do I use word I can't, words I can't pronounce? Thank you for watching and if you want to uh, follow my YouTube channel please click on the 
picture of me here and uh, hit subscribe button and the little bell that uh, gives you a notification when I posted a new one or uh, have a look at uh, the next uh, another film that I made if you want to uh, thank you very much for watching I will see you bye bye